The appearance panel along with the graphic stylist panel are one of the most important features in Illustrator. And once you master these panels, your workflow will increase greatly. Hi there everyone, my name is Andrei Marius. I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years. And in this Embattled Task Plus tutorial, I'll show you all that you need to know about Illustrator's appearance and graphic styles panels. To better exemplify most of the settings from these two panels, we'll use this set of retro styles from Envato Elements. So make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator and we'll start with the appearance panel. To open it, you can either go to window in the menu bar and select appearance, or you can use the shift and F6 keyboard shortcut. By default, you will get a black stroke and a white fill. In the top left corner, you can find a thumbnail which represents the existing appearance settings. If you can't see it, you need to open the flyout menu and select show thumbnail. If you wish to hide that thumbnail, you need to select hide thumbnail from this menu. Let's bring it back. And you can simply click and drag it onto an object from your design whenever you wish to apply the existing appearance settings to that object. Next to the thumbnail, there's the title bar. For the beginning, this can be useful to know exactly the type of object that you have selected. It can be a path, type, a group, or even a layer. And it also lets you know if a graphic style is applied. More about graphic styles after we finish with the appearance panel. Back to this title bar, you need to select it whenever you wish to be sure that an effect which you're about to add gets applied on the entire object, not just a particular fill or stroke from your design. Finally, you have the opacity bar. Click this opacity text to open the transparency flyout panel, which can be used to adjust the opacity or the blending mode settings for the object that you have selected. Again, these changes will affect the entire object, not just a particular fill or stroke from your design. Speaking of fills and strokes, let's see how you can edit them. To change the color of a fill, select it and just click this color thumbnail to open the swatches flyout panel or hold down the shift key and click the same color to open the color flyout panel. Same commands apply for the stroke. So click the color thumbnail to open the swatches panel or hold down the shift key and click the same color to open the color flyout panel. Besides color, you can adjust the stroke width using one of these buttons. In order to further stylize a stroke, you can click this stroke button, which will open the stroke flyout panel. Now, in addition to weight value, you can adjust the alignment of your stroke. Maybe pick a different style for caps and corners. You can turn your stroke into a dashed line. Maybe add some arrowheads or even select a custom profile from this list. Now that you understood the basics, let's focus on the buttons from the bottom of this panel and learn how this can be used. First, you have the Add New Stroke and the Add New Fill buttons. As the names clearly state, this can be used to add a new stroke or a new fill. If you have no attribute selected, the new one will go on top of the existing ones. And if you select an attribute, any new attribute that you add next will go right on top of your selection. Moving to the next button, this can be used to apply an effect for a selected fill or stroke from the appearance panel, or even for the entire selection. In this case, I'll use a transform effect to move just this stroke two pixels up and two pixels to the left. 
Once you click OK, the effect will be applied and will show up inside the appearance panel. You can always click it to open it and make some adjustments. And keep in mind that all of these effects can also be accessed by going to Effect in the menu bar. Let's return to the Appearance panel and using this button you can quickly clean up your panel as it removes all fills, strokes and effects. We'll undo this move. Now using this button you can duplicate a selected stroke, a fill or even an effect. And then using this other button you can remove an effect, a stroke or a fill. Keep in mind that you can hold down the control key to select more than one attribute from your design and delete them at once using this button. Now besides these buttons, the add new stroke, add new fill, duplicate, remove and clear commands can also be accessed via the flyout menu from the appearance panel. Before we explore the rest of the commands from this flyout menu, Let's have one more look inside the appearance panel and see some other settings that can be adjusted. First of all, using these tiny arrow icons, you can expand any fill or stroke. Once expanded, you will get access to a separate opacity button, which can be used to change the blending mode and adjust the opacity of that particular element from the appearance panel. Using these eye icons, you can enable or disable a stroke, a fill, an effect, or even the opacity settings. Disabling the opacity will replace the current settings with the default ones, which is a blending mode set to normal and the opacity set to 100%. And whenever you wish to enable all hidden attributes, all you have to do is open the flyout menu and go to show all hidden attributes. Let's get back to this flyout menu and if you select reduce to basic appearance, Illustrator will remove most of these settings and it will only keep the top fill and the top stroke, but without the effect or the blending settings. So let's go to reduce to basic appearance and as you can see all you have is this fill with the pattern and the stroke with the color but no effect. Let's quickly undo this move to get back all of the settings. Now if you open the flyout menu and make sure that this setting is disabled, Whenever you create a new shape, it will keep all the settings from the appearance panel. But if you open the flyout menu and enable this setting, any new shape that you create will only keep the top fill and the top stroke from the existing appearance settings. And again, any effect or blending setting will be removed. Once you're happy with the look of a design, you might want to add the same appearance settings for some other objects. There's more than one method that can be used to achieve this. First, as you already learned, you can drag this thumbnail from the appearance panel on top of your other object. For the second method, you need to open the layers panel, so go to window and select layers. Open your layer and focus on the target icons that stand for your shapes. Hold down the Alt key and click the target icon that stands for the shape with the appearance settings and simply drag it on top of the target icon that stands for your other object. Once you release the mouse button, the appearance settings should be transferred. Finally, for the third method, you can save the appearance settings as a graphic style and then use that graphic style to easily apply the same attributes for other objects. For the beginning, you can open the graphic styles panel by going to Window and Graphic Styles, or you can use the Shift and F5 keyboard shortcut. To save a new graphic style, all you have to do is click this button. To apply it, select an object and just click your graphic style and if you wish to apply the graphic style and also keep the current settings, make sure that you're holding down the Alt key as you click the graphic style. 
Now that we covered the basics, let's focus on the rest of these buttons and see how you can use them. As with the appearance panel, all of these commands can also be accessed via the flyout menu from the graphic styles panel. First of all, you should note that this button can also be used to duplicate a graphic style. You'll learn in a few moments why you might want to duplicate one. This break link button goes hand in hand with the redefine graphic style command, which can be found in the flyout menu of the appearance panel. Let's say that you apply the same graphic style for several objects from your design. Select just one of these objects. Focus on the appearance panel and as you can see, Illustrator lets you know that you have a graphic style applied, but clicking this break link button will cut the ties between the current appearance settings and your saved graphic style. So just click this button and the graphic style will disappear from the appearance panel. Select another one of these objects. Let's make a quick adjustment. And now if you go to redefine graphic style, your graphic style will be updated in the panel and all the instances where your graphic style is used will get updated as well. The only object that doesn't change its appearance is the one that you unlinked. Now, in some cases, you might want to keep both the original graphic style and the updated one. This is where the duplicate graphic style command can come in handy. So let's press Ctrl and Z to undo these changes. Click and drag this graphic style on top of this button to easily duplicate it. Now you can make again the color changes and go again to redefine graphic style to update your graphic style. Moving to the next button, this can be used to remove selected graphic styles. Keep in mind that you can hold down the control key or the shift key to select more than one graphic style and remove them at once using this button. Once saved, graphic styles can be easily shared between Illustrator documents. Using this button, you can open some panels with built-in graphic styles, which you can easily apply. You can save your own graphic styles using this command, or you can open some other sets of graphic styles, like the one that you got from Envato Elements. Again, you can easily apply any of these graphic styles. And now that you know what all these buttons do, Let's focus on the remaining commands from this flyout menu. Let's start with the merge graphic styles command. Let's say that you have two graphic styles that you wish to combine into a single graphic style. All you have to do is hold down the control key to select both of these graphic styles, open the flyout menu and go to merge graphic styles. Give this new graphic style a name. Click OK to add it inside the graphic styles panel, and now you can easily apply it. Next, you have the select all unused command. This feature can be pretty useful whenever you wish to quickly clean up the graphic styles panel, as it selects all of the unused graphic styles, which you can then delete using this button. Select sort by name from this drop down menu whenever you wish to reorganize your graphic styles based on their names. You can easily rename a graphic style as long as you have it selected. Just go to graphic style options, type in your new name, and remember to click OK or press Enter to apply the changes. You can check one of these two options to preview your graphic styles either applied on text or on a shape. And besides this default thumbnail view, you have another two view options which can be pretty useful if you wish to always see the name of your graphic style. Using one of these list view modes, keep in mind that you can right click on any of your graphic styles for a larger preview. Finally, this override character color feature will only affect the text from your design. Keep it enabled if you wish to remove the current text color as you apply a graphic style. And if you disable this feature, the graphic style will be applied on your text without removing the text color. That's mostly all that you need to know about these amazing panels. 
Now that you're familiarized with all of these settings, feel free to head over to the Envato Task Plus website and try a tutorial that puts to work the power of these panels. One of these nice text effects can be a perfect start. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andrei Marius and I'll see you in the next video.